out here in Mexico today meeting someone who I met for the first time this past weekend, actually over at the New York State Fairgrounds for the Coliseum Dirt Cart Clash. Tyler Henry is with me right now. He knows a lot about these go-karts. He's been doing them since age 11. Is in his 15th year racing right now. Started back in 2008. Didn't race this past weekend. Actually helped out somebody who did win, Logan Christofoli, but he'll be out at Weedsport this weekend in the Clone Super Heavy and Pro, Pro Clone Super Heavy divisions. Tyler, just met you the other day. It's kind of weird. I, I talked to you on Facebook the night before. I met you the next day. Boy, we've become fast friends here pretty quick, haven't we? <laughs> yes, we did, Doug. Yes, we did. How much fun was it this past weekend getting out there and smelling everything again and being out there with everybody? Uh, it was really good up there. Um, Jeremy Corcoran put on a great show up there. He busted his tail on trying to get everybody up there and put on a really good race and put together a lot of good classes and actually some pretty good money up here for the North. So we had a really good weekend, and it just – it was fun to actually go up to a track that we've never raced at before yeah. and did what we had to do. Why didn't that work as well, do you think? Because I was a little surprised that there weren't more people there. Probably just too early in the season. Yeah. And with Weedsport right around the corner, there's a lot of guys that are just trying to get their stuff ready. They want for, to take a chance on something Yeah, bad, getting huh? their stuff racked up. So. Okay. I was kind of curious. I really thought it was going to do I thought it was going to be a good deal, and I was kind of bummed out when I saw the car count. But yeah. honestly, I think if Jeremy puts it on again – I bet he'll get more carts back again next season, especially okay. for the pay that he was putting in. Yeah, because it looked pretty racy. It looked like the guys were having it fun It was really there, good actually. racing. Yeah. Okay. There was multiple grooves, and you could actually pass on there. So, Is this cart that uh, I got you in front of, the, the, the pink one, is this the one we're going to race this coming weekend? Um, we're actually going to be racing this black one that's behind me right here. Okay. What's the difference between these two? Um, this one's a brand-new 2022 Vulcan from Kinetic Racing Chassis, and this one is a 2019 Exodus. Okay, so is it just that it's newer? Or it's just it... a newer cart, and this is going to be the first time we've actually hit the track with this one. So we're going to shake down the new cart and see what it's got and have this one for a spare just in case. How important is newness in the karting world right now? Um, I always say new is better because then you know going into the season that you've got a brand new cart, nothing's bent, nothing's tweaked that you see. can't see in the chassis, and there's no fatigue on the chassis. Okay. I'm a type of person that always says new parts every couple of shows. Mm -hmm. depending new front end new rear end okay um does do welds crack like they do on not really welds it's, it's more just bending and it's more like just fatigue on the chassis they're so with like thin tubing it's just they they flex out carts flex out after a while okay how much do we have what's the range like if somebody was you know because a lot of people can't afford a, a bigger car and we're going to talk yep. about the big car that he's going to hopefully get in by the end of the season what is the high and the low for carding if somebody wanted to get their kids in or maybe somebody like you your age wants to get in if you want to get into it you can honestly get into go-kart racing right now for fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars that's it and you can get into a cart pretty much race ready okay i always see everybody with a lot of tires how many tires do we need because tires that's, seem to be everything right now that's the they? big thing right now is the tire work is you're trying to get en enough tires to keep you up front and a lot of other tracks you don't need a lot of tires but when you go to like these higher dollar tracks and these like weedsport it's high tire racing you've got to use tires up because it's so abrasive on the tires I see. So just like everything else, it betters yep. on the track. So it wasn't abrasive this past weekend. It didn't look it anyway, was it? Um, it wasn't really too bad. We didn't burn up too much stuff, mm -hmm. but there was guys burning up a lot of tires up there. And I can smell the tire prep in the air here. And unlike other forms of racing, you told me tire prep is legal and, and pretty much you got to do it, right? Go-kart racing, if you're not tire prepping, you're finishing in the tail. What kind of stuff do we do? And, and tell me whatever you're comfortable with, Tyler. So. Tire prep, it's all depending on what your tire guys have got you going with. So it's just whatever they tell you to wipe and whatever they've got that they're mixing up. It's all different contraptions. Everybody's got their own tire game. Everybody's got their own tire status. We do the inside and the outside or just the outside? It all depends on where you're going to. It okay. uh, varies from track to track to track. And what does the tire prep actually do? It hardens the tire. It can soften the tire. It can do different... Um, it can get you more bite. It can take bite away. Okay. Because I remember we did something with my daughter's car when she was doing micro rod racing to kind of help her. The prep back shake, I think, made it a little softer. But she said after about two, three, four laps, it seemed like you were right back where you were. Is that pretty much how it goes? It all softening? depends. If you're, if you're chemical racing is what they call it, you're racing on the chemical. But then there's tracks all across New York, uh, New York State that you're not chemical racing. You could wipe like a light prep and just go out there and race on one set so of tires. So it's not needed as much depending on where you it are. It all depends on what track you're going to. Okay. When we started off racing, it was just simple green and WD-40. Yeah, I remember that people just clean them off basically. Clean them off and wipe them with WD-40 and go to the mm -hmm. grid and race. What did the WD-40 do? 
Uh, WD-40, it just added bite to the tire. That's it, it. just put oils, brought the natural oil of the tire to the top, and just ran from there. Yeah, because they're tires, so they, there's something on them so that they release from the mold, and you want to get that off, don't yep. you? Yeah, because you can't just go out with a new tire, or can you? No, you can't. You can't. You've got to okay. really do, like, grinding, and some guys cut their tires. Mm -hmm. So I see some guys washing them. You you pretty much want to wash your tires every time you come off the track. Really? So in between, everybody's got to do that yeah. little pail of water, and they know how to do it. Huh? You got to think of a tire like your skin. You want the pores to be open. Good, I like that. Good analogy. So how big is this weed sport deal going to be this weekend? It's a pretty big deal. They've got yeah. a lot of money on the line. so it's, Everybody's uh, going to be there, huh? <laughs> at, everybody and the brother's going to be at this yeah. race this weekend. Saturday and Sunday, by the way. Go to weedsportspeedway.com. You can find out more. Now, what you got me going on when we were talking on the phone, you're actually going to do something. Was it new this year at Oswego? It's not new this year. Um, I had an opportunity to drive at Oswego um, actually two years ago with Ron Pratt and Brad Haynes. And we, um, I wanted to focus more on the go-kart racing, so we pushed back onto the go-kart racing. And now my family and I have actually bought my own small box super from Brad Haynes. And we're going to start putting that one together this season. Okay. Do you have it yet? Uh, we already have the car. It's already uh, completely cut apart. We're mm -hmm. going to put a new clip on the front and a new clip on the rear and just do some updates. It's an older car, so we got some modifications we got to do for it. Okay. What are the modifications supposed to do? What are you... More what... for like driver comfort oh, okay. and just the car is a little outdated. Mm -hmm. So it's a 2004 dog chassis was built by Dave Marzen. Oh. And we've got to do just some front end updates and some rear updates to bring it up to snuff with what the guys are running with now. So how much did you get around us? We go Speedway before. Uh, we ran a couple shows. Just we a ran couple. a couple shows up at Evans Mills. So mm -hmm. not too much, but enough to get my feet wet. And enough to get comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Enough to get me comfortable and enough that to get me the itch to start going on my own gonna have to do some fast fridays maybe to try to catch oh up, we're gonna possibly. do a bunch of fast fridays and a couple of private track rentals to do it and um get a couple good practice sessions in okay we're not into it and we're not into this to go out there and just take the car and show up on a saturday night we sure. want to get enough in there so i'm comfortable in the car and i'm not going to go in there and just tear stuff up yeah and you want to win right you don't we do want to win around, right? but so. the wins will come it's just all seat time and uh -huh. get comfortable in the car and, of course, with the asphalt cars, the one thing I have noticed is years on the chassis doesn't matter as much as it does in the dirt world. Is that fair to say? That is very fair to say. Is it just the bumping on the inconsistent dirt surfaces or the way they flex or something? It's just or? the flex, the flex on the cars. The asphalt cars, they just hold up mm -hmm. a lot longer. Like, there's guys that are racing on 12, 13-year-old cars and up, running up front. Yeah, so, so, it's not, so we do have what we need to run up front once we get these upgrades Correct. and everything done. Okay. Yep. Who's helping you? Because obviously you mentioned your family, and obviously what a great opportunity for you and your family to all do this <laughs> together, right? So my biggest supporter behind the whole deal is actually my uh, Aunt Lynette. She's she's one of the big um, people behind it for the money-wise and getting us going. And then Brad Haynes has been helping us out a bunch, and um, the DeStevens family has been helping us out a bunch, and Dave Marsden is going to give us a hand here. Okay. Very soon. What's the number going to be? It's going to be 15. Okay. Why 15? Um, 15 was my number when I started off racing. Oh, so it's been in that all along, huh? It's been like that, and it was actually my uncle's number when he ran okay. um, snowmobiles back in the day. So fortunately, nobody had the 15 before you got up there. Otherwise. Uh, James Babcock did have it. I'm not sure if they're going to renumber it or not, but if okay. they do, we're going to do it as a 115. Okay, so he gets to keep his number because he was there before. Correct, right? and he was like, a commitment driver before. Yeah, and it's not like dirt where you can just add an X or a T or an H or something and, <laughs> exactly. and go out there. They don't allow that, do they? they I don't know what a swiggle. We haven't tried that yet, but we're going to go from there. I don't believe they do. If one of you guys knows, put it in the comment section because I kind of thought they didn't, but I don't know. I'm just like Tyler. So hit the bluey, guys. That'll subscribe you. I appreciate you making some time for me today. And uh, pick me some apples and bring them to the track next time. Okay? <laughs> we definitely we'll, will. Because uh, he's right here in apple country. So good to see you and good luck, okay? Thank you so much.